Welcome to another video on the digitallife.com. I'm Ian Dixon. And this video, I'm going to take a quick look at my first impressions of a MacBook Air. Um, I normally use a HP tablet PC and I've had it for quite a few years now and it's been getting a bit old and when the MacBook Airs came out I can see this was probably a, an ideal device for me because I like things to be really light um, and be able to portability and carry them around and whatever so uh, I thought it would be good to be able to still run Media Center with it uh, using Bootcamp or um, virtualization using uh, VMware. So in this video what we're going to do is have a quick look at the Air which I've got in here and just have a quick look at how it compares in size to say something like the iPad and then I'm going to fire up uh, and have a quick look at the, U the UI and, and have a see how Media Center works on it. So first part, the unboxing part, well I've already unboxed it, I couldn't uh, wait to unbox it to do it on here but this is the packaging, typical sort of Apple packaging, very nice, very slick. We've got the MacBook in here. Uh, got a power supply and in here we've got a recovery. Now there's no recovery CD, instead there is a, a USB um, drive, bootable drive on there. Instead you've got a USB stick which you can boot from. Uh, to do an OS recovery. So first let's have a look at the actual machine itself. I mean, it feels really nice, it's got sort of an aluminium feel, really sleek, pretty thin as well. I mean you can see, compared to the size of my HP over here, uh, my tablet PC is only smaller than that one but uh, it's small. Here's the iPad. If you have a look at the relative thickness, you can see at this side actually it's well, slightly thinner and it does open up slightly thicker. So in terms of ports and connectivity on this side here you've got USB and a mini display port which you need an adapter to plug into HDMI or VGA or whatever. We've got the power, uh, another H uh, USB and headphone with a microphone. The power supply is this kind of uh, typical Apple power supply uh, with the magnetic, I think MagSafe they call it, uh, power supply adapter which is just clips in like that and go that way, or that way interestingly enough, so depending on how, you, um, how you're working it's got a really nice keyboard, I really do like that, it's one of my favourite things on there so it's got a really nice trackpad which I've got used to now, the scrolling it did take me a while to work out with the right click, you can enable it either through two finger clicking or you can right click at this bottom corner which is exactly how I prefer it it's a setting for that. So I'm not going to go too much into macOS now because I'm sure anybody that's interested in that's already seen it and anybody that is not interested in macOS doesn't want to see it. Um, so as a, you know, as a device, it's the, the physical aspects of it are really nice. You see from, if I um, shut this down, so we're in sleep mode now, and I open it up, that's really how much uh, how fast it's, it comes on and, I've, and to be honest that is my real world experience of it as well it, it li literally does come on that uh, that fast so really nice physical keyboard really nice screen it's hard to see on the on the video I guess but the screen is really nice and it's got very good for viewing angles as well so hardware really really impressive the battery life is so yeah, when you first switch it on and through full charge it says five, six hours and then it kind of goes down. But I've noticed it seems to be pretty accurate and it's constantly changing the, the battery time on the, on the indicator. So um, I found, I, I had this on all night so from six, seven o'clock last night till about 11 o'clock last night and I've had it on this morning and it's still saying two hours so. But that's, I was doing a blog post and a bit reading and I think because it's quite aggressive on the power saving as it's turned the screen brightness down, uh, it seems to prolong the battery life. So. That's what I was really looking for when I go to CS, I want to have plenty of battery life. In terms of weight, there's actually not much difference between that and the iPad. Um, still the iPad I think is a better sort of browsing experience, uh, media sort of consumption or uh, media ingestion as Gary said on the podcast last week. But uh, it's uh, it, very nice hardware. So 
Uh, next part of the video, I'm going to do, I'll move the camera around, we'll have a quick look at sort of some media consumption mainly uh, with VMware and media, and then we'll have a look at how we can reboot Fire Boot Camp straight into Windows 7 and, and look at how Media Centre works in that. Okay, so I'll just move the camera around. So here we are running OS X, uh, I've got all the usual iLife applications on there, so I, the Gar Garage Band and iMovie and uh, um, in Safari and everything, so you know, normal Mac OS stuff as well. Well, obviously, from an integration point of view, the main thing for me is being able to still access Media Center and Media Center files. So, I've actually got VMware Fusion installed. Let's pull that into a window. So, VMware Fusion is virtualization software. Uh, so, here I am running um, Windows 7 in a window. Uh, alongside uh, OS X, so I said I've got Media Center in in there. I've got all the Windows applications. VMware has some nice features. You can kind of launch individual applications, um, sort of windowless, effectively. So I could have Media Center there just to run Media Center without the rest of the Windows Seven uh, Chrome showing through. Uh, so it's nice to be able to have that facility. But uh, see here, I've got. Uh, uh, Windows running and I can also go full screen as well so if I go full screen we go in straight into into Windows so this is actually virtualization but running the bootcamp partition so I install bootcamp which partitions the um, the drive and then um, you can boot into that or you can virtualize it so I found if you just wanted to do the Windows thing then you use the, the VMware if you want to actually go and do something it, for say some audio editing you know, or video editing something like that you can boot straight into Windows. Now this machine has got the 64 gig uh, flash drive and it's got 4 gig of memory as well. Um, there is a 2 gig one but I felt that the, the 4 gig would be better uh, especially if I'm doing a virtualization. So what, all the Windows stuff works fine. You know, this side of it, all the applications, the Windows applications they work fine. In fact interesting that the two finger scroll still works, all that kind of stuff works fine. Uh, so that works really well. Uh, Windows Media Player, you can listen to MP3 files on there, no problem with that. Let's just uh, let's try one of these. So, no problem playing any of your WMA or anything that perhaps OS X wouldn't play. And with VMware, you can have shared folders as well. So, these are shared folders, so these are OS X folders that I've shared out um, through VMware. So uh, I've shared out a Dropbox folder and I've shared out a music folder as well. So I've got access to, to those two here. Got Media Center, that works into music. I've not added all my music on yet. The music playback, absolutely fine. Even the you can see that the sort of the transition effects and everything are working fine. So that's okay. Well, let's go and have a look at recorded TV. This is where I've had more issues. I've got to record it here. I'm just going to go to this local storage. I've got a couple of files on here, see, so. This is a um, a recorded TV file I've copied locally. So this is playing. You see the audio is okay, but the video performance is suffering. Oh, but there you go, it's working okay now. So now it's caught up. So this is virtualized, running um, Windows TV files directly um, through VMware. So really, if you've got some recorded TV files, you, you don't have to convert them to a, any special formats. You can just make sure you've got them in your Windows partition and just play those. So that side of it is good. So let's just have a look now and see if we can pick up something from um, my Media Center file. Okay, so this is now uh, streaming over the wireless uh, recorded TV file on my main Media Center machine. And you see, this is playing absolutely beautifully. So, again, as a media center uh, 
so device this is great running uh, through that let's try it in a window so there we are in a window media center playback working fine with uh, in OSX now before I go and be into media center or sorry into Windows 7 I just wanted to show um, opening a recorded TV file so the recorded TV file we were watching before is on the bootcamp partition so I'm just going to play that through VLC this is the uh, DVR-MS file, not the WTV file, because that find this one. that didn't play. But let me just jump to the bit we were watching before. So you see that this isn't playing perfectly now. Apparently, this is a, an issue with VLC and the WTV format. So I think if I converted it to um, MP4, it would be fine. But as you can see, it doesn't quite work. Um, as, as smooth as it does through the VMware session. So I think really to watch it, you can you'd be better watching it in uh, in VMware Media Center. Interesting enough, that with, with VMware installed, you can see the DVMS file there. If I double click to open this, it actually opens it. Um, in Media Center, so it fires up Boot Camp, launches, and then launches Windows 7, then launches Media Center. So that's a nice, a nice feature. But you've got to wait while Windows starts. So what I'm going to try to do now is boot into Windows 7 and have a look how it works with Windows 7. So now I have Windows 7 running, uh, which so we're booting straight off the Windows drive, so no VMware. Uh, so I've got Media Center on here, everything's working. You know, it's the Aero Glass effect. You know, the effects are working. So you've got so there's no there's no issue with drivers or anything. In fact, you notice Aero Glass was working uh, fine under the VMware as well. And of course, I can go into Media Center, into Recorded TV, pick up the file we watched before. So this is the performance is better. You can see this, I didn't have to kind of wait for it to sort itself out. It just works straight away. So. Uh, it's hard to tell from from the camera I know, but that is a beautiful screen for watching TV on. Yeah, it's really nice. And of course I can go back to home group. Right, so now I can go back through um, the recorded TV. So this is now... Uh, just like before, this is streamed from my uh, media center machine in the living room. So there we can see it's streaming uh, TV from, from the living room. Then to reboot back into um, the Mac, I can just do restart. So overall, I'm really happy with the uh, with the air. Um, I really love just the hardware feel of it is really nice. Um, now I know there's uh, I've had a couple people say Lenovo and others make uh, you know the similar nice hardware to this, but I have to say I'm really impressed. The Windows performance on it is really good, no problems with that. Um, so battery life, really good on that. So overall, really impressed, really like it, and it's been interesting to see how I get on at CES. Thanks for watching this video, and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.